I just, I can feel God's love for these people. Love is going to try and save you from being hit by some vehicle. Christianity is the only true religion. Stop. Put me in it. Yes. Christianity is the only religion that teaches you you can't do it without God. You can't Amen. do it without Amen. Jesus. Yeah, I couldn't get it. It's not just a religion. It's the only way to God because everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus is the only one sent by God himself who lived sinless, who died for our sins, took our place, and then rose from the dead so he bridged the gap between us and God. He's the only one who did that. Nervousness happening. Like I truly believe in my heart. I do not think people that do not know him are just gonna burn in the fiery pits. I don't think it's that black and white. Sorry, it's black and white. It says in John 3 that he didn't come to condemn, he came to save. But if people do not accept salvation, it's like someone stuck on the train tracks and this person comes to save you from the tracks. But if you say, no, no, I'm good. Train's gonna hit, babe. Nobody made this up. I don't, nobody likes talking about this, but it's just a fact. Everyone that doesn't just assent, believe in this one thing, mm -hmm. they're going to burn forever. Mm -hmm. And that was like my epiphany, like, oh, there has to be more in the world and the universe than that. That can't be the end of it. That might be like an all-knowing God, but that's not an all-loving God. People who don't know God and don't know the real love of God can't grapple with hell and the, the judgment, but they don't really understand that God is love and he need not make humans come and live with him forever in his home. Like, it's his house. And Jesus says he's the only way, so I'll, I'll believe him. I mean, he could be loved. What but, if I said that? But, but what Jesus, makes him special? Jesus proved himself to me in my life. What if I said that? Yeah, but that's an adult. But you haven't saved me. What if they yeah, do though? What if what he does? What if they... Nobody can do what Jesus did because everyone has sinned, but Jesus never sinned. It's a big difference. If that makes you a better human being, fantastic. Oh, I don't like that phrase at all. It's not just that it makes me a better human. Jesus himself has said that you need to accept him in order to be saved and that you is the human race because like, everyone has sinned. So everybody needs to accept Jesus. You know, it's not something that, it's not ice cream that makes us feel better. <laughs> How can you prove without just the basis of faith that this is the absolute truth? It's not science, guys. Science is observable by the human eye. But God who made the human eye, wouldn't he be so much more than what we can see? Like an artist and a painting, will the painting be able to ever comprehend anything about the artist? You really need to focus on whether you are going to theologically accept the Bible as the absolute document of truth. It's not just the Bible though. Bible is the absolute truth, I do believe that, but there was a time I didn't. And it was the reality of Jesus in my life which matched the Bible. Hence, I can say the Bible is the truth. It's hard because like, I feel like I'm hyper-liberal too and stuff because I'm like, oomph, 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 you know what I mean? It's stuff. Sometimes I don't honestly feel like I cherry pick from the Bible. Like, I'm like, well, they still eat shellfish so I could be with a man. You know what I mean? It's so tough because it's like... This topic is very something very close to my heart because I knew a person who was amazing and because of this person, I made a whole skit convo with God and I've talked to God on this topic for years and years and years because it was very confusing to me that this gay person is so awesome but he's doing something that is so strictly a sin in the Bible and I was just trying to understand this with God. God showed me that each of us have sin. I am myself a heterosexual who has sexual desires that are straight but not of God and so the Bible asks every one of us to surrender every single thing, our sexuality, our thoughts, our mind, our identity, everything at the foot of the cross and let God decide. And he's our maker. He's the best one who can decide. The Bible is always open to interpretation.
It's been obviously transcribed so many times. If you look at the God that's portrayed in the Old Testament and the New Testament both, it looks a lot more like us. Jealousy, folks in power. vengeance. These are yeah. human qualities. <laughs> right. yeah. To decide which book goes in, which book comes out. Like every day I sin because I kiss this man that I love, and like then I jump on a box and go to OnlyFans. If you've ever heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls, it's ancient text from the Bible where if you were to compare it to the Bible today, Perfect. only things different is like punctuation. But that's amazing because that was that's one of the deal. most amazing discoveries of yeah. this century in that they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls and they thought they would correct all these mistakes in the mm -hmm. Bible. But it was so amazing that 99.99% was accurate. So they were... Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 tells us that no scripture is for interpretation. So it's actually for us to accept rather than understand. So when I, when I learned to stop trying to understand rather and just accept, then I was able to truly be free. These people have said such amazing points. There was a time when I felt confused. But let me tell you, when I met God, it's in my 40 day fast video if you want to check that out and he told me that you're not doing this alone i don't want you to do this alone that's why i'm god when that hit me everything just clicked and i was able to see god in the text of the bible unlike any other book when you understand the holiness of god that's when the anger is just like just like how a judge would be angry in front of someone who has raped 10 ladies you would expect him to be angry because because sin hurts people and god made the human race that was beautiful and he didn't want that to hurt anybody and be unlike him this precious person in the red um, lacy thing he said that god has human qualities in the bible we're made in his image there are going to be similarities because he made us to be like him. And through Jesus, we can actually be like him through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Anytime I said anything about the rapture, it's always just like, well, you're thinking with your human brain. You're not thinking with your heavenly brain. I'm like, but I only have a human <laughs> brain. Like, I can't. Yes, but no. <laughs> because like I said, through the Holy Spirit, he gives you literally a new heart a new mind, a new understanding that cannot be met with a human brain. It's like when Jesus tells Peter, what you're saying about me being the Christ is not revealed to you by flesh. It's revealed to you by God. Can I ask you something too? If someone's kind and treats people right and it's a really good hearted soul, but say they really don't believe in anything, perhaps, God, all right? Do you believe that they're gonna burn just because they don't believe? He's like, if you wanna be with me in eternity, these are the qualifications. Jesus so, is the so only that's a yes. 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 <laughs> So that's hell. a yes. The, the good person will burn in hell. It's not, <laughs> nobody can be good without Jesus. So say there's a person who shares a lot and gives a lot of charity, but they lie. Every person is going to have some flaw or the other, some shadow, some kind of demon or evil in their life. So nobody is good. Jesus gives you a new spirit where you can be like God. And that's the only thing that is good. I would like to know how you became ex-Christians. I think that might help Actually, us. Yeah, that'd be really nice. By reading the Bible. <laughs> Yo, if you don't read the Bible with the author and you know people can be like, great, what if I just don't believe in God? Let's take an example. Say a person wants to do an interview with me. It, it happened recently. Say someone says, here's her email or here's her number, whatever. If they don't believe that I even exist, every sign and every clue is going to be looked at with tinted glasses. Like, what if it's not her number? And so just like you need faith in order to come to human being, we need that for God. Without faith, you can't even come to God because you don't even believe He exists. It's only when you believe in God and who He says He is that the Bible is going to make sense. And you need to come to Him knowing that He is God or at least giving a chance. Jesus invites this. He says, knock on the door and the door will open to you. That's what I did. I said, I want to know more. You go sincerely looking. I want to know what's true and I want to know it for myself he will reveal himself to you. Do you mind if I ask if you have a religion? I, I am technically part of the satanic temple. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have seven. <sighs> okay, so I'm sorry. So don't believe in God, but believe in Satan. Mm. 
Is that um, considered a religion? I'm just curious. It is technically considered an religion, a religion, okay. but it's like the religion. Okay, so a religion. Okay, this is mind blowing. But this is what John three talks about. The condemnation of the world is that the light has come into the world, and the world preferred the darkness. It's not that we can't worship; it's that we don't want to worship God. We would rather worship, literally, Satan in this case, than God Himself. A religion, okay. but it's like the religion to end all religions. They okay. really hate organized religion. This is like saying it's a fish to eat all fish, but it's not really a fish because it's eating the other fish. Like, come on, oh, who are you fooling? So let's look at all four gospels. Let's compare them to one another and tell me that there are not contradictions in them. Nope, that there's no contradictions. One event in happened. The Bible. Also, when I came out to my mom, you know, I went to uh, you know Christian camp. Man, I just want to say I have so much love looking at these people. I just, I can feel God's love for these people. They look so confused in their appearance, their hair, the clothing, the cross-dressing, the lack of dress even. And I just see a lot of hurt. And if they're watching this, they would not like me saying that. But I can feel God aching to come and heal and save. And, and that's what Jesus is all about. When I came out to my mom, she ripped up my birth certificate and sent it to me. Oh my uh, gosh. Which is very like, you know, I said to my therapist, I was like, oh, that's, that's so horrible. bad. That's so bad. And I'm honestly so hurt by the experiences she and, and people like her might say in the hatred that they've felt, even from Christians. I just want to say, I feel like saying sorry, you know, on behalf of any Christian who has been hateful, that Christian does not represent Jesus. And you may say, you're one of those Christians because I'm saying things that Jesus said in the Bible, but it sounds aggressive or it sounds hateful. It sounds judgmental, but I'm just saying what my savior has said. And I can guarantee you the love in which he says it is so much more than the, the strictness and the firmness that he also has. And they are both part of the same parcel, like love is going to have toughness with it. Love is going to defend you. Love is going to make sure you don't fall into a pit. Love is going to try and save you from being hit by some vehicle. And there is going to be some amount of push and pull with love. And uh, that's not to be mistaken with lack of love, but rather it's all part of love. I actually, I lost two partners in a row to cancer, which is just, you know, kind of, Horrible. yeah. That's so sad. It is experiences like that that really push people away from Christ and uh, this is a warning for us Christians watching this. If you say you're a Christian and you are behaving like a devil, it does so much damage to the name of Christ. It can make a Christian an ex-Christian. wish it could come in a Christian package, but that just does not work for me. I feel like the world is too big for that. And I, and, and I see your reaction when she's mentioned... Y'all, the world is he much more bigger than us and God is so much bigger than that. Like, if you're looking for adventure and you're looking for openness, try God. I, I came out to my family. I am a happily married man for 15 years and I my family hates me because of that. Yo, so I will just say real quick, that's not how Jesus would react, okay? And that's not how he would want a Christian to react. However... If there's a person who is expecting a Christian to be okay with a lifestyle of homosexuality, in God's view, it's like he puts in homosexuality with adultery and lies and, you know, all those things. And just think of the other things. Like, are you okay with someone lying to your face? Are you okay with someone cheating on you? Like, no. And there's a reason, there's a very good reason you're not okay. Every building, every school, every college has rules so that you can have freedom in that framework and it's not close-minded it's not like why can't you just accept me as i am well because there's a reason that god says that this is the sin it hurts people you can't reproduce you we're not designed to be gay i know people are going to come after me for that but we're just not and there are so many testimonies where god has healed people of being gay <laughs> you can look it up you know what's happening in there so I feel it's interesting that a lot of the ex Christians seem gay, except for that girl. I'm going to up the speed because this can get soup. I mean, it's already super long and pardon me. My mom was a good Christian. Like she was doing what she thought she needed to do to keep me from going to hell. Like right. she, no joke. Right. That's what she thought was the most loving thing in that moment. You know? Said from her own mouth. You can be gay and Christian. I already literally answered this. Yeah, I'll just go though.
<laughs> Obviously, and stuff. I'm a big uh, fruitcake. I bartend in nightlife. I go-go dance. I do adult content. I love it. I love having sex with men, which almost sounds bad now that I'm saying it. Oh, it's amazing. But I, uh, <laughs> I still love the Bible. I treat people with respect. I uh, go to confession. I do all these things. But I love my LGBTQIA community, and I'm a gay man. My mom says, you can be gay, you just can't act on it. Can a gay person believe that Jesus Christ died from the cross for his sins and that he has risen again, that Jesus is God? Yes, yes, Amen. definitely, and can go to heaven. And we do care about other people saying, no, no, your God says this is okay when the Bible strictly says it's homosexuality is sin. Also, there's nothing I want to do, though. I love who I love, and I truly believe Jesus Christ, the embodiment of love is like, I get it. I feel like he's always kind of like letting me know, like, I'm glad you're, you're, you're on the right path. I would love to hear this. I believe the Bible, I believe what it says, and I also understand in the Bible that it says that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God or take or have any part of it, and it lists a lot of different sins. And I think that there's a difference between people falling short, we all do. We all make mistakes, we all struggle. We're all figuring out our identity, all of that. Yeah. But when it, for me, the difference is if you are purposely day in and day out saying, this is what I want to do, and this is how I want to live my life, and it goes completely against the word of God, that's when I feel you have, you have separated yourself from the Lord and you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Do you think that I truly will go to hell even though I'm Catholic and I practice? just because I love a man. You know, I want someone that's there that I, I want to love and I want to take care of them and I want to provide mm -hmm. for them. But I don't think loving anybody is wrong, but we're talking, and I know that the Lord believes in Christian marriage, man and woman who are monogamous and who are not going to be cheating on each other, fornicating, all that stuff. So with you, honestly, I'm just going to go a little off script. I know you're searching. I know you are. I, and I know you mean it, and I know that there's things that you feel like you can't change. Yeah. I know that you have a genuine, sorry. Do you feel that you're searching? I don't think that I'm searching. What would you just say to him when he says, I'm not searching, I feel that I found... Well, the thing I was going to go forward and say is I do believe that you want to please the Lord, and I know that you're... Thank you. So he's you, I, I know that you feel like you can't change. Can we get to the root of why homosexuality is wrong? So because it's in the Bible. Please do. And it goes... That's the most heartbreaking thing ever. I used to watch American Idol with Simon Cowell, and he said, the best thing I can do for you is be honest so that you don't waste any more time going down this path if this is not for you. And I've come to respect that, you know. And so the truth is this man, I love him and God loves him. Um, but you cannot go to God's house doing things that he has strictly forbidden. He has put a big no-no. Like if you really love God and he is your priority and he is your God, you can't also say, like, I love Jesus and as a man, I love men. That means you have two gods. And Jesus said, you can't have two gods because you're going to hate one and love the other. And it shows up in decisions like this. Who's the actual God? It's against God's oh. design for family. <laughs> So here's a, here's a true sin, like, a, like I said, is, it's a virus. It stems from unbelief. It stems from trusting and believing in myself, right? So my dad beat me, he was an alcoholic, my mom. All of that was an excuse, right? I chose, chose. like she was saying, right? Chose. So I chose, I'm going to follow my thoughts and believe in myself. The I'm, judge. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Everything that you're bringing up to the table are decisions. When did you chose to be gay? Right, no, I did not. There was no choice for me. You can't help who you fall in love with, right? And like, say if you, uh, are, are you biracial if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so ditto. No. I can just see the animosity whenever a Christian is talking and it's so, Honestly, it's just so annoying. <sighs> I love the point this ex-gang me member was talk talking about. Wow, it's really late and my mouth is showing it <laughs> in my slurring. I understand that some people are born gay, maybe. I have come across people like this and the root of being gay is not what people think. Like if I go back to my example of being a heterosexual sinner, I didn't choose, I never chose that one day I'm going to start thinking in a corrupt way. I never chose that. And when I started thinking like that, it was horrible. It was horrible. But I had to submit that to God and he is a healer and a deliverer and he set me free from that. Like I'm sure if this blue shirt guy would ask Jesus himself and be open to what is Jesus gonna say? Jesus would tell him, but instead he is interpreting that Jesus is saying, yes, go ahead. This is the right path for you. This is what I've understood, you know, in life. When I'm fixed on something, I will take anything as a sign that I'm on the right path. And then you can throw that back at me and be like, you can take that as a Christian as well. No, actually, because being a Christian is actually contradictory to everything my human flesh has asked me for. It's not pleasant on a human body level. But the reason that I have fallen in love with Jesus is because there is so much more to the pleasure of the flesh. 
there is the pleasure of the soul which i will ask all these people do you know what i'm talking about when i say pleasure of the soul they may say yes but if you have not tasted jesus for yourself in the spirit you have no idea what is the pleasure of the soul i can't help who i fall in love with and i'm not supposed to because jesus christ he did all you saw my video where i was on um, scrolling on my phone and saying i can't help it i could help it there are a lot of things we do that we feel like we can't help i can't i can't stop eating chocolates i know these are not great parallel examples with what he's talking about at a much more serious level but there's a lot more control than we think we have that god has already given to us uh, they're all supposed to go to hell didn't follow the bible it's, uh, yeah. not very much. he was, he was <laughs> extremely not he was ext jesus not only followed the law but he fulfilled the law also was saving people healing them and also saying go and send no more he right. wasn't saying let's all party and let's all and people like to say he's just like up and down someone though is it even the woman who was caught in adultery yeah. he wasn't saying don't throw a stone at her you're okay keep doing that he was like stop that don't do that anymore no, and I that's what that. he's saying don't be a harlot or don't be extra about it right and so but me there is nothing he made me this way there I is disagree. nothing i can do how many i still it's a day to day thing if i'm always lying i'm always cheating i'm always, i have no I have no Those things are bad. Why is being gay bad? Yeah, I don't those are decisions you're getting to murder. Yeah, I answered like three violence. times. It's common sense. I'm so sorry. I think people have lost all common sense on this issue. A child looking at a woman trying to be a man will be like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? A child Well, theologically, I don't know why the Bible is against it. I don't know why God says these things. Then ask those questions. But yeah. the Bible is clear in saying this is God's standard, yeah. and I don't, I, I don't understand. Like a man and a woman, they're just standing together. The firmness of a man and the softness of a woman, they fit so beautifully together compared to a man with a man. There is, you know, that's a business photo maybe, but the structure and the the formation, the heart, the minds, it just makes total sense in on every level, emotionally. mentally intellectually spiritually heart wise role wise it's perfect God, well why don't I you don't understand about there's a design for family you could say it's about the natural order of creation that you know of procreation and creation yeah, like, you only I have have sex that's what i want bro like god literally tells adam and eve go and multiply there is a reason for sex and part of that is reproduction <laughs> and it's okay people have distorted sex so much that it's become this um just for pleasure and that is so stupid because i know that people um have very corrupt minds and hearing this can trigger a lot of corrupt things in your mind but thank god i've come out of that and i'm able to see sex for what it is the seed of a man is literally entering a woman in the, the sex that god designed all kinds of sex now and that can potentially form another human being and that is the most beautiful thing that i have heard of people may have baby may not have a baby that's another whole another point but a big part of it is producing another human being and that's why it needs to be between a man and woman it needs to be in the context of marriage there's a commitment and a particular age like it all goes with every scientific biological law <laughs> what i watched is as like clearly gay people of my generation i watched them kill themselves i watched try i watched them try to be different try to subvert an important part of themselves to fit into this idea like this one or two lines from the bible first of all that is so sad secondly this applies to people on all kinds of levels of all kinds of sin people who have crazy anger issues and find ways to cope and it ends up killing themselves there's a lot of reasons why people die and why people kill themselves uh but those are not reasons to champion can somebody see what's wrong with being gay already all the things that she mentioned it leads to depression it leads to people killing themselves and she is saying that it's because of the people and the society and the bible that says it's wrong but what good comes out of being gay can i ask since everyone is so harsh against the good of christianity and the good of the bible and the good of god let me ask straight up what is good about being gay tell me in the comments i will also come back you you may tell me or i get to love who i want to love okay is it a continuous love story and you may say well that's not there even for heterosexual love i disagree my parents have a great love story if you're a fundamentalist person 
that believe that that's wrong and they manage to get into the legislature, they will pass a bill against it. Can you just see that being gay has made people ex-Christian, made them have so much fear of law, made them have so much fear of authority, and that there is so much questioning against authority in general, like authority of the Bible, authority of God, who put what into the Bible, who's taking what, who's interpreting it for us. There is so much rebellion against authority in general. Even if you don't understand where it comes from, the fact that you have that belief and you will force yourself into government to then decide for other people. This is like, like say a human makes a computer and puts all these commands into the computer, do this, do this, do this. And this is like saying, why should the computer just accept those commands and do what the human is saying? You should ask the human, until I understand, I'm not going to do what you're saying because I don't understand it and it doesn't feel true to me. It's like what it sounds like to me. Seeing your Jesus hole is filled already yeah, with Jesus yeah, itself, yeah, right? Jesus is inside the hole. <laughs> Excuse me, Lord. <laughs> Yo, I didn't even comment on the thing that he said about doing adult only fan stuff and all those things. Not that I know much about it, but I know enough to know that's... Uh, that's like completely against so many commands in the New Testament that you shall not have youthful lust just for the sake of youthful lust, you know? It's like, don't just do things that make you feel good just because it feels good. There's a lot of things that can feel good but are hurting you in the end. It's like sugar feels amazing, but you can have diabetes. My question is what I believe is true. That's the nature of knowledge. What? That's the nature of knowledge. Reality. Look at that, a middle ground. <laughs> Look at that. I even question like being an ex-Christian sometimes. Me questioning is something that has solidified my faith a lot more, finding information about like the evidence of Christ, the evidence of God. The, the, the hubris of Christianity to say, we have everything figured out and everything is true. Science has humbleness to say, we know only this and we keep on researching mm -hmm. to do. Bro. <laughs> We are literally doing the most humble thing in saying my master who knows everything says this so I'm agreeing with him. It's like a computer agreeing with the human saying the human made me and I'm just going with the human. That's all I can do. Any computer that doesn't do that is a horror movie. Science doesn't claim to know everything. Me. Your belief system does claim to know everything and doesn't because move off that point. Because God says updating, so. Making itself more and more accurate. That's the, the beauty of life. This is like, if I just literally take a scale and measure 15 inches and someone comes across and says, you know what, this laptop can play a video where people in another country are meeting people from another belief in their same country and talking about it. And then I say, bro, this is 15 inches, full stop. That's how ridiculous this argument is to me. I'm the Uber driver who talks about Jesus. Do you think that's harassment? Oh, no, I've been going over that. Um, so I've spoken to a lot of people. Oh, so it's okay to talk about being gay. It's not okay to talk about your actual experience with Jesus Christ. Okay. Christianity, as it is presented to us so far, bro, the ages, I believe it's deeply immoral. And the image of God is deeply immoral. And, oh. the, and some of the teachings Whoa. that are there are incredibly immoral. Excuse so I, I don't me, to that excuse me. Whoa. Lord, forgive him. I do believe that I do have a better moral compass. I find it hard a to believe. better moral compass than God. Whoa, bro. That you came to that conclusion based on... A oh, Lord. This world is ending, bro. Just get ready. She's gonna come back any second. Calling God immoral is like... It's like one of the worst sins that a human can go so far to think. Because he is so beautiful in his nature. I have seen good humans, okay? And if they're here, the goodness of God is through the roof, guys. Completely through the roof. And the best example of that goodness is the death of Jesus Christ out of love, out of forgiveness, out of grace, out of compassion, out of mercy for me when I didn't deserve it, when I didn't ask for it, when I was doing things that were opposite to what he would have wanted me to do. He thought of me and died for me. And then to call that immoral, oh, bad move. Anything from my perspective that that's right, as long as you don't intervene with my perspective. Bro, but... <laughs> that doesn't work. Say that there's only one way to outer space that a human can travel, which is through a rocket. And someone comes along and says, no, my hot air balloon, you have no idea how far it can go. It's stupid, honestly. And it's the height of pride. Funny that the word is pride. I'm a good person. Yeah. I think I would go to heaven, but I won't because I can't force myself to believe in Jesus and God. That's what that I don't sucks. believe. Okay, why do people believe in heaven if they don't believe in Jesus? Because heaven is literally God's home. 
and Jesus is literally the inheritor of the home that God built. Think about that. <laughs> she believed in love and kindness, which is Jesus Christ. So that's what I believe would send her and everyone else to heaven. So then I want to challenge that. Then yeah. why don't cut the middleman and just believe in kindness? I wish so I could it's say. It's not about that. The Bible's purpose, that God's purpose wasn't about kindness. This is a problem. I'll be honest, I had a problem with the middleman. I knew God and I was not able to grapple about Jesus for so long. And I searched for God and when I found him, it was with Jesus. If you let yourself believe in him, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> but it's without Jesus, there is no way for us to get to God because nobody can be the way God wants us to be. It's like we owe a fine to this judge, which is like a, a gazillion, quantipillion crores, okay, let's say. And there's no possible way for any human to pay that. And Jesus paid it. And we just have to say, hey, yeah, I believe in you and thank you. I accept what you've done for me. I'm sorry for what I've done. And so you get to go to God. I feared it. Yeah, what if like the pastors in the back of my mind that I've gone through in youth group, I'm like, what well, benefit is? But I refuse to live like. I wish he would go down that path more. I fear what death will feel like. I'm like, man, I, I feel like it's going to hurt. And I, I hate saying that because I'm such a pansy, but I'm afraid of what's going to happen to the people that actually care about me. Just knowing that they're going through something and I can't be there to comfort them. Well, anymore. apparently you're not even going to know. I always just thought like, do I want to live forever? It sounds so exhausting. <laughs> so I I stepped forward because I don't want to also. Kind of what the blue guy said, I don't want to fear death, but I hate pain. And if death involves pain, which there's a big probability that it will, then it's like, ah. But there's a part, big part of me that is also more and more growing, which I'm glad of. I can't wait for the other side. It's like this longing to be with God and this longing to be in heaven because this earth is so, it's not what I was made for. It's a temporary place. I'm just passing through and I feel that every single day growing, um, but I don't like pain. So that's why I stepped forward. I hope when I die, it's just like in the ground yeah. and just like resting. I hope that I'm we discussed this in a service recently called Eternal Salvation, how people who don't know Jesus and who don't know God probably won't like heaven because heaven is a place, first of all, it's forever. You don't get to do what you want to do because it's God's house. It says that people are worshiping him constantly. And if you don't like worship music here, probably won't like it there. Why should I fear something that in its simplest explanation, it may just be nothing. It may just be no experience, no pain, no suffering. And I'm fine with that. Actually, there is a place for no pain and no suffering and that's heaven. I'm sorry to say that there's not a place of no suffering apart from heaven. I'd be lying if I didn't say it wasn't something that ate me up inside to think of people that I know and if they don't know Jesus. Um, so I think about that, and that is, that is hard, and I know there's a lot of people's totally. perceptions of Christians totally that want to send you to hell so bad, and that's not it, so that's all. We're all looking for something to fill that void inside of us, right? Some of us, it's Jesus. Some of us, it's, you know, really wild sex. Ain't uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There's everything wrong with that. I'm really glad they had this conversation and I agree that we cannot make anybody believe anything because we're human beings. We can only share, we can only throw the seed out. The rest would be God's doing. But um, one way Jesus.